after two flights, six hours on the bus, now the real question is, is Pamukkale worth the hype and most importantly, your time and money? Watch this video until the end and you can answer this question for yourself. For the moment, I can just say, wow. So, before I show you the beauty of Pamukkale, let me tell you how we got there and how can you do it as well. We stayed in Antalya and we went on an organized tour from there, which lasted 12 long hours and in total it cost us 60 euros. But this includes pick up and drop off from your hotel, tour guide, extra stop to Lake Sauda and unforgettable memories with the fun people that we met on this tour. And just look at this gorgeous breakfast buffet. So we had a very good breakfast and after that at 7 a.m. we had our backpacks, water, food and we were ready to head off to this day trip. And don't forget to hit the subscribe bell button down below for more adventures around the world. Our first stop for the day, it is called Sauda Lake, which they said that it looks like the Maldives, which I kind of doubt, I mean, it looks very pretty, don't get me wrong, but for being at the Maldives, it is really, really cold. Hello, hello, guys. Hello, hello. at our first stop, and also my first Turkish coffee. And it's windy as fuck and cold as fuck. I, I'm literally freezing. Yeah. I didn't bring any jacket because no, we, we who brought, would We need brought it? food, we brought, you know, like swimsuits, you know, but we didn't bring, you know. Mm. Oh, w water is given in this lake, you know, nice. Isn't it like so funny? This is from plastic, but it's like not really resistible. You open it like that and you drink. And the Turkish coffee, Turkish tea, uh, uh, you know, a cube of water and a little bit of Turkish delight is one euro. <laughs> really? Yes. Also with this view, the Maldives, as they say. Here we are at the Turkish Maldives. They call it like that because of the white sand and the water of unusual bright blue color. But if you look closer, you actually realize that this is not sand at all, but they're mineral deposits. What's that? Whoa, the sand is like both black and a bit of white. The mud which covers the lake helps with joint diseases and also it is great for your skin. And that's why they actually sell so many clay facial masks. No, it's really good for you. Yeah. And here we have so much of it. Oh, okay. Take it home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, let me come out. Come, come, come. But be careful with this sand, which is not sand, because it's really easy to sink into it. You know how you usually buy the clay masks and then you put them on your face? Here we can like a whole Lots lake of, clay. Lake of it. And All it's right. so natural. But basically you have to wait for it to get dry. To dry up. To dry up. See? Like here. Ah, okay. And then you remove it. It's so dirty but at the same time clean in a weird way. Ah. And after a couple of more hours in this minivan, we arrived at Yerapolis and we saw Pamukkale, which literally means cotton castle in Turkish. So we just entered into Pamukkale and this is what we see. Let me tell you that I didn't really imagine our Roman heritage site, but now we'll learn all the history and I will tell you in the bureau because it's way too hot to concentrate at the moment. Let me get this thing straight from the beginning because I don't want you to be as confused as I was in the beginning. Yerapolis, it is an ancient Greek city and it was found by the god Apollo and inside this city there you can find the thermal pools but this is actually a quite small part of it because you can find a lot of ancient Greek ruins, Roman ones as well and also this beautiful Roman theater. 
and it's finally the reveal time of Pamukkale. It's time to take off our shoes and go to the actual thermal pools. I'm so excited and I really hope that it's actually worth it. Lots of kids screaming already. Yeah, I, I can already see a ton of people and a couple of selfie sticks, but it's okay. So let me tell you that I came because of these images and this is exactly what I expected to see. However, this wasn't really the case because it turned out that uh, there are three different sections to Pamukkale and each week they fill up with water different part of it. So at the week that we were there, it was a different section filled up with water and it wasn't as pretty, but what can we do? It's actually really refreshing. It's still very hot, but we have some unexpected nature. Don't get me wrong, I still totally love this place. I just wish someone had told me this before actually visiting Pamukkale. And another thing which I wish I knew it is how big it is this place because you would realistically need at least half a day to like a full day to visit absolutely everything. And unfortunately, I had only three hours, which was definitely not enough. So my tip for you it is to try and avoid the crowd and go there right after it opens at 6.30 am. Yes, very early, but I think it will be worth it. The main issue it is that in the afternoon a lot of organized tours like mine go there in the early afternoon. Despite the tons of people that are in here, I would still totally recommend you coming in here. But maybe early in the morning or later in the afternoon, it's better. Apart from the fact that it's 40 degrees and we're both sweating, it is so beautiful. I have seen many photos, but it is a totally different thing to see it in real life. And I would say it's even bigger and more beautiful than what I expected. I think for me, it's a very tactile experience because you can really like touch and yeah. feel the stone, look at like the different you know patterns, the like the water has eroded over the rocks. So it's really, really interesting. It's like a unique experience for me. I'm sorry, I'm closing my eyes, but I forgot uh, my sunglasses. Uh, and I have them by a Such a bad them. idea. Yeah. Looks like milk. <laughs> Okay, let's do a little game and try to walk the opposite direction. Of okay. course. Let's see. And maybe that's a little bit too obvious, but for me, the biggest disadvantage of going in one of these organized tours is that you cannot really decide how much time to spend in every single place. Like in Hierapolis, I wish I had in there at least three more hours. So if you have the advantage of going there on your own, I would suggest you staying at least half a day to a full day if you really want to explore every single bit of Hierapolis. Ah! It's so much fun in here. You can do all of this. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem is when it enters into your eyes, which of course already happened to me. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I started a trend. I can see also a kid is doing it. But I'm never okay. How about you wash your face? Oh. Ciao, ciao. See you at it. Another really water evolving experience that we just did, it is going to the Cleopatra pools, which are right, which are these ones. And I would say I definitely enjoy it, enjoyed it because you can walk in there, but the coolest thing, which kind of makes you feel like a real goddess or a god is that you can actually like sit on the ancient uh, Roman ruins and like swim with them because uh, at some point in time which I'm going to insert right here there was an earthquake and all the Roman ruins uh, fell down and they, then they just left them inside the pool which funny enough makes an incredible experience nowadays the only thing is to go inside this Cleopatra pool it costs 135 traditional 
lira which is like six pounds it's not really cheap but at the same time i would say it's definitely worth it and basically what you can do it's like entering into this labyrinth of a swimming pool it's quite fun by the way my skin feels so much better and so much more clear i don't know if it is of the white clay that i put on it or just because of the water itself but i feel great and if you enjoyed this video go check out this video from istanbul love you all bye